I grew up in the Midwest and there are a lot of tornadoes. And yes, so the yes. tornado drill is you open your doors and your windows when a tornado is coming. Because if you close everything down and batten down the hatches, it explodes. It's, now it now <laughs> it has a very a very big pressure gradient that you don't want to be a part of. Yes, yes, the yes. same is true in our human system. That that we're, what quantum science is showing us is that we are actually the space between the particles. And so when we animate there, it creates this openness that allows yes. the fluidity that you're talking about not locking down as a separate self that needs to be defended or protected. It's available. I'm just free. I'm here. Breathe right through me, and I'm still here. So, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, that just reminded me of my uh, my uh, Dorothy. We're not in Kansas anymore, Mom. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Wedding Go and the Greatest Secret, where we explore the end of your suffering and the beginning of lasting happiness. I'm Hale Dwoskin, and today I'll be joined with Dr. Sue Mortar. Dr. Sue Mortar is an international speaker, celebrated author of The Energy Codes, teacher and doctor with over 30 years of experience. She brings together ancient wisdom traditions with cutting edge quantum science. Dr. Sue's visionary models and techniques ignite an entirely new approach to accessing creative genius and living from personal freedom. The Greatest Secret talks about the, the importance of recognizing that you are not the body mind world or you're not your thoughts your feelings your beliefs uh, you are that which is aware and i know that's your experience too can you talk about how that how that how you relate to that what's been your experience of that sure i uh, 20 years ago i had a personal experience with this transcendent state of consciousness in the midst of of some ancient meditation practices and I had no idea that it was a goal. Um, and I think because I didn't know that it was an opportunity or an, even an option or a place that one could access in consciousness, I was able to access it in consciousness because I think if I knew, I would have probably been pursuing it, which would have kept me from ever experiencing it. Yeah, isn't that true? Uh, the, yeah. The, the, so the, I, the, the, the grasping often is the biggest obstacle. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and my personality was such that I would, I would have been all about, okay, just tell me what I have to do and I'll do it all and I'll make that happen for myself. And, um, and so fortunately, I wasn't aware of that as, as an alternative reality. And um, I was simply meditating for stress relief and trying to manage some headaches that I was having. And, and I was um, suddenly in a in an altered, you know, exalted state of consciousness. I could see 360 degrees in every direction if it, if it were even relevant, but I was perceiving spherically actually more than 360 degrees. I, I could see the earth beneath me about the size of a marble and I was embedded into it up to what would have been my knees, uh, but I didn't have knees because I wasn't in a body I was a, just this ray of light and this brilliant light overhead was pouring through this channel or this ray that I was. And I knew that as it was doing such, uh, this, these beautiful colors were happening. And every time I took a breath, it would happen bigger and big breath, big response, smaller breath, smaller response. And what was happening was the sensation of this light becoming love as it passed through this ray that I was. And I knew that this was, this was true for all of us. There was, there was nowhere to go. There was nothing to become. I was, I was aware that I had always been there, that that was tr truth and that everything else that I had been experiencing was a project that I was engaging in by projecting myself into this physical dimension. And there was nowhere to go, nothing to become, nothing to achieve. It was, I was wholly whole, full, complete, satisfied, satiated. And uh, I knew that, that we each were this and we each were engaging in this, this process of, of becoming, of materializing. And, 
and that every time I took a breath, the degree to which I would breathe, uh, love would happen. And I knew that it was up to us to learn to allow that to be just simply what we are here being. And uh, my, my migraine headaches you know, went away. I healed a scoliosis in my body as I was learning to embody this experience. And it, it changed my life forever. I, I spent the next 10 years of my world just turning my life into a living laboratory to figure out how to re, reestablish this state of consciousness, how to, how to arrive there again, uh, only to realize there wasn't a there, it was right, right yeah. here. Right, and right, right. Uh, so that's, that's why it took a while because I kept trying to get back there and uh, learned a lot in the process. And I started teaching my patients some of the processes and they started getting better faster and staying better longer in between visits with me. And, and so it just became an, an entirely new, new purpose, new focus, new reality in my life. That's yeah, beautiful. That's really beautiful. You know, that thing about here and there is a really key piece because I, I've noticed as I work with people, that's people will have these tastes of experiences like this. And there's such a, a tendency to go try to think it's it's there and it's not what's natural. What's natural is the suffering and is the drama, is the story, the limited body mind persona. And they think as they're trying to bring that persona to there instead of recognizing that the persona is just a distraction from what's already here. So, yes, and it, yes, an alternate way of looking and perceiving and exchanging in the world and, and dropping more deeply down into this true self, suddenly that we can perceive that, that personality, that peace that is this ex externalized engaging set of circuits that we're so used to just plugging into and engaging, uh, we can see through it from a deeper place and it just changes everything. We're able to engage, but we don't have to engage in order to have a sense of self. Right, and that's an important that's distinction. Really transformational for people. Yes, that's an important distinction. Most people are looking outside of themselves to find engagement, not recognizing that it starts right here as what we are and as what we share. <laughs> It's the same yes. thing, yeah. I liken it to when we land here, we kind of splat. It's kind of this rough landing. Our body right, right, goes right. one way, our mind goes another, and our breath is just hanging out, trying to figure out if it's ever going to be safe to be here. And in the course of our lives, we're trying to pull ourselves back from this splat. And, and as we do, we start to recognize that we don't need to be attached and associated or identified with any one part, which is typically what I have found is that people become identified as the mind because it's the, the initial piece that, that makes it safe that we can figure out, should I navigate this, do that? How do I fit in? What, how do I belong? How do I make myself you know, uh, safe in some way? And, uh, and so uh, then we grow up inside of that, that association with the mind. And, and our job is to peel away from that and to recognize that's not who I am. That's, some, that's a tool that I have. And that distinction can just change everything for people. Oh, totally. It's a, the mind is a, a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it goes down a road that is often just no fun to be on. No, no, no. And, and, and we don't realize there's a simple alternative that's always right here. Yes. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. So uh, one of the things that you teach is that uh, we are the universe. And you've already started to explain that, honestly, but can you expand on that a little? Oh, sure. Uh, you know, we're pure awareness. That's what we are as our, as if we were to try to figure out, well, what am I? If I'm not this person, if I'm not this personality, if I'm not this human, then what am I? Then, you know, we speak about that we are pure awareness. And, um, and, and, and then I, I have another conversation. I blend them together. And that is that everything is energy including us, and we are just energy that is awake. And so if we take the entire energy field, the unified field, um, it is expanding. It's always expanding and consciousness is expanding. And, and so we are always expanding. Our awareness is always expanding. We're becoming more and more aware of life outside of survivorship and 
we're able to come out here into more of a creatorship. And, uh, and so if we, we also know this truth that all physical matter is compressed energy. So in order to create the chair we're sitting in, um, we compress energy and it creates solid matter. So this body is compressed energy. We are here in this dimension as the unified field compresses and compresses and compresses and compresses itself. We come into self-awareness and we are here as this, 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 this compressed sense of energy that is, that is a body of energies. It's generating a body of energies and that is, is who we are. So we, we have been living as if we are here and the universe is out there and we're separate from it and we're just trying to engage inside of this bigger scope. And I just like to share with people that actually it's the, the universe has folded in in this way. If you're thinking in those terms, just imagine it like it's folded in on itself to generate a presence that we are calling I am, where we are that. Yes. So we are made of the universe. We are made of those same energies. And so when we can learn to turn them on and awaken as this cosmic universal presence, it begins to change everything that we engage with. It begins to change how we see and where we see from on the inside of this system. And who it is that's looking out begins to come into an entirely different focus when we begin to recognize that even just laws of physics, you know, all physical presence is a, is a, is a representation of compressed energy, including the, the human being. So I then finish it off with saying, you know, you're not actually a human being, you're just energy that's being human at this time. You're just yes, being yes. human. And so it just cause does this quantum flip for people and we begin to start opening to belonging on a, on a greater sense of really understanding our constitution. Yeah, that's beautifully put again. Thank you. I, it, it's where people get caught too. I think you would agree with this. I'd like to hear your take on this is that they forget that this universal folded energy, as you put it, is boundless. It doesn't, it, it doesn't end at your skin. It's, there's, no, there's no actual separation between what we're experiencing as the body-mind and the world slash universe whole field there's if if you look at your direct experience in this moment you really can't find a boundary between the two would you agree with that exactly we are we are a continuum and we are focusing our attention on the physical end of that continuum and we did so for so long that we started to think that that's who we were we believed right. that's all it was we lost touch with the rest of the continuum and so then people start in their spiritual journey and seeking and trying to understand the meaning and, and the perspective and, and the role that they, that they are and that they play. When in reality, if they would just release and decompress that compressive force that generated this idea of being a separate physical self, then this, we blur the boundaries. And when we blur the boundaries a little bit, we actually start to get in touch with, oh, there's the rest of who I am. Oh, right. there it is. And, and we allow ourselves to, to become attuned to more and more subtle energies. The more subtle the energy, the more in touch with the rest of who we are in that decompression out all the way to that universal field um, we become, we become aligned with it. We can relate to it and we can then start to animate it and allow that to be what I am instead of me here and that there. Um, right, right, it, right. It's, it's an extension, a continuation of, yes, yes, of yes. who, what I am. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's very fun. It's very fascinating. Oh, it's really fun. <laughs> it's been my hobby for decades to explore <laughs> right. those boundaries. Yes, yes, uh, and, and it's, I have yet to find anything more fun and more enlightening and, and, and more fun to share too. It's the, I, I know you have this experience too, but jump in and you can talk about it. It, it. It's really fun when you're with a parent, others, even though there is no other, that, that we're, where you're exploring together and you watch, watch yourself and them rediscovering this new, a new, it's like, Oh, and you go, yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. I love it. You know, how every time I share about it, which is multiple times a day, right? Yes. It feels like it's the first time I've ever 
I've ever explored it or spoken it or shared it with someone because it's so rejuvenating and 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 kindling to this soulful purpose and this this passion just rises because of the very energies that we're animate that we're you know acknowledging we're acknowledging this space between the particles the space between us we're saying you know there is there's there's no there's no empty space between us it's it could be animated by our consciousness we could allow it to be alive and bonding us blending us merging us all the time and yes, it's yes. just so so replenishing and flourishing to my system that it it literally i just get i've been you know saying having this conversation for tw the 20 years 21 years that have passed since that initial experience and and it feels like uh it just feels new all the time and even though there is so much experience with it and teaching other people how to acclimate and and find it 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 is it it, it will never get old because it's no. always new <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah this yeah we're we're very fortunate i i remember even before i started recognizing truth at the level you're talking about i remember just feeling deeply grateful in the in the early 80s when i first started uh teaching uh at the just the basics of the sedona method because the sedona method is a tool for letting go of all the imaginary obstacles to being that and uh, I remember from the very first courses I taught doing that, it was like, wow, how did I get to be so lucky to be in this uh, being you, this body mind being used in this particular way. And that feeling has never left. It's, I feel so um, uh, blessed to be used this way. Yes, I was raised in a family that was focused. My father was a pioneer in energy medicine. He began working with the subtle energies in back in the 70s when when research was coming out regarding you know quantum science and and bio I, I met, you, I've met your dad come to think yes, of it. I, yes. I read I read a, a, a piece in a uh, one of your seminars. Actually, I think it was in Sedona, wasn't it? Where um, I read the read a piece you were both there so. i remember yes he's, yes he's wonderful yes, yes. He's and wonderful and being. so so i grew up you know in this conversation but i hadn't had any experience of a multi-dimensional transcendent level it was it was in the here and now this conversation that i grew up with which was that we could heal ourselves and that thoughts were things and that we were creating our reality i i remember speaking about this in junior high and high school you know to my friends who were whose eyes were crossing at the time yeah, so because, you're, what <laughs> not really conversation that you have when you're 15 16 oh. with most of your friends but but it was it was so intriguing and and the 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 wonderful opportunity and and the blessing in my life to understand it from an intellectual standpoint and then to have these experiences that were that were just you know melding of it all together instantly um i i concur with you that it is it's truly a great blessing to be able to relate to life in this way and i'm i'm so excited for your listeners and those that tune into your podcast to be exposed to so many angles of the discussion and the and the contributions to building this this understanding because humanity is destined to awaken to this and uh, you know the sooner the better and it is yes <laughs> I agree with that too <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah it, the world looks like it could use just a little bit just a touch of support at the moment <laughs> what we're talking about right here that stress that you're feeling right now there's another way of looking at that yeah absolutely and it's 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 such a it is such a blessing to to be able to to help steward people in in this fashion it's, yes Nothing yes. matters more, really. No, I agree. So uh, you've already touched on it because I think your dad is is what you're talking about is bioenergetics. That's what your your dad does or did, and you do now. So can yeah. you talk about how that relates both to wellness, but also to to awakening and the to the truth of who you are or what you are? Yes. So so the 
the the bio field is just a field of energies that are associated with the with the human physiology is it we used to think that it was a byproduct of the function of the body that when the body was doing its thing it emitted a radiant and emanated a, a radiant field of energy around it uh, which is true but it that's not the only energy that exists in this subtle anatomy of who we are in the energy field so it might be like what someone would think of as an aura or this this auric field that's around the body and most people by now have seen pictures of that and and have some some affiliation with with that kind of idea but what what science is showing us is that that actually the field creates the body. It's not just that the body creates the field. There's another right. field that the body creates, but the field is is through this series of compression, uh, you know, is generating a body of energies. And so, if you could if you could picture it like um, in this compression, uh, there is a stream of energy that gets generated because these forces are coming together of this this uh, compressing, compressing, compress as we were referencing to even get to the to the physical dimension. And, and so that compression generates a stream or a flow. And this stream of energy can be measured to come through the top of our head, through the center of the brain, through the throat, through the center of the heart, right down through this central core of the body, right down through the tip of the spine and into the earth. And it hits the earth and then turns and is kind of stepped down for what I call human consumption. And it rises up again. And actually this energy flow rises straight up through that central channel, comes out the crown of the head and cycles around the outside of the body and then is taken up again at the base of the spine and it just keeps recycling and recycling like this. It's constantly being replenished and hitting the earth and it's constantly rising. And the whole idea is that it, it'd be able to rise with the same um, frequencies that it is descending. And actually it's that energy motion that creates the physical body that it creates this body of energies that then uh, compress into physical form, as we know, a cellular structure and systems and organs and glands and muscles and, and so forth. So if that energy is allowed to rise without interruption, the same way that it's descending, then we have an ascension and a descension of those energies that are matching and it rises higher and higher and the field gets bigger and more robust and more comprehensively capable of healing anything, perfecting anything and everything in its, in its path. And so our job um, is to learn to allow the energy to rise up through us the same as it's descending down through us, as us. And so I do like the caveat that, that it's, it's important that we realize that we don't have energy running through us, although I reference it that way initially to just to, for so people can relate to it. But actually, you are that energy that I'm talking about. The right. truth of you is this energy that is doing right, this. Right, right. And so the energy will start to rise. We start to rise and we come upon aspects of our own consciousness that we're refined in. And then we come upon aspects that we're not so refined in yet. And we're here in this lifetime, you know, trying to, to acclimate and to embody more and more of all of who we are. So this filtering system oftentimes referred to as the chakra system, levels of consciousness associated with each of those levels or vibrational frequencies of energy. Um, as we are acclimating ourselves uh, masterfully in each of them, then the energy does rise. But if, if while we're in the process of that, of becoming acclimated and masterful at it, the energy will come up and then it will go around and it will cycle back and forth and try to find the path of least resistance. And that rising energy, when it takes a wobble on where it doesn't have circuits, it, it drives around. Think of it like driving through the jungle and there's no road, the road stops. So you have to go over here and find another opening and yes. then make your way. So when the energy is moving back and forth this way, it creates a wobble in the rise. That wobble creates a distortion in this energy field. And now this person is in here looking out through a distortion. They see a distorted reality. And they react to it as if it's true. So they are, it's like watching a movie because that's what we're doing. We're projecting a movie onto a movie screen and then we're walking through it. But the movie screen is kind of distorted. And so everything you see is kind of, you know, distorted in ways. And so, so what, what, what I'm loving doing uh, is, is teaching people how to build this, the neuro circuitry and build the electromagnetic energy circuitry which is the energy that we're speaking about, and build circuits more and more so that this 
rising energy can rise without the wobble, which takes out the distortion. And a byproduct of the distortion being removed or remedied is physical healing happens in the body. Emotional healing happens more easily. Mental healing happens. These distortions, which we call an illness or an ailment in, you know, on any level of your life, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical and chemical and biochemical, etc. These are all the byproduct of distortions of, of perception. And so we're stabilizing our ability to perceive more accurately and for the energies to run through our system more, more consistently and more accurately, efficiently. And a byproduct of that is healing. The cells start perceiving a different message. They start producing different chemicals. And the next thing you know, we're producing chemistries of, of pristine perfectioning rather than chemicals of reactivity to the distortions that we're perceiving or the threats that the nervous system would then perceive and, and that, the, that the body would then have to react to and exhaust itself and create all kinds of health conditions. Yes, so. yes. And when things are out of balance, there it's also like a leak in the energy system. It's, it's not just that it's distorted, isn't it? It's also, it's, it's a place where your energy system is losing, losing life force. Isn't that also yes. what's happening? loses its momentum, loses yeah. its, its potency, uh, loses its ability to pierce through those veils and see more clearly. Uh, we become weakened in a sense that we're not able to sustain the energy flow the way that it's ideally designed to be flowing yes. in this system that we call human. Yes, yes. We, I love that. Good explanation. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I know uh, you have, I know some of your work is hands-on. I actually experienced it at that, I think you worked on me, come to think of it, uh, at that seminar, you wanted to know if I wanted to, it was either you or your dad, I can't remember now, you took me into a room and did some hands-on work with the, yeah. the bioenergetics. But yeah, are there the tools that can be shared in in the format that we're in right now, a, a process or a perspective or something that we can give the, our listeners that they can take with them and start to experiment with this? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, ultimately, the work started with my father's research with the hands-on work. And I always knew there was something that we were supposed to be doing to just totally empower people to move their own energy, to move themselves in a way that was self-healing and self-regulating. And, and uh, then after I had this, this awakening 20 years ago, it became obvious to me what it took for me to get into my body with what I was experiencing, to embody it. Uh, I then retro-engineered it and started teaching people how to transcend their own limited idea of who they are and their separate self. And, uh, and so it developed into to many, many processes that, that I recommend for people to do. So a simple one we can start with, and I'd like to do about three things that build on each other really quickly. Please, no, no, take, take your time. This is, you know, I, one of the things I'd like to do whenever the teacher I'm speaking with is open to it, is give people a, a gift like this. And I, so, so far we've been talking about it, which I think yeah. is very helpful because people have a framework to hold whatever you're about to do next in. But I, I find in the, with the Sedona method and our tool set of tools, which are doing very similar work to what you're doing, is that talking about it is not the same as actually actually right. experiencing it within your own body mind world in a, in a live way and so let's go for it absolutely i can i can definitely attest to the fact that the experience is different than talking about it yes. <laughs> growing up in the conversation and all of a yeah. sudden i was just oh my gosh in a totally different reality it yeah it changed everything so so i mentioned the splat earlier okay yes. so let's just think about well, our energy is dispersed. Parts of our consciousness are just dispersed and infused and emerged and kind of entrenched in or even enmeshed into our outer reality. We're used to directing our attention out there to figure out, am I okay? Am I safe? What should I do? And so our circuits are aligned now because of that um, in that manner. And so we want to start to direct more of our attention into the central core, just gathering back from the splat. 
So if everyone could just picture gathering yourself this way, it's not like closing off the world. It's about like folding in like an accordion, concentrating the energy back in the core of the body, because this central channel is, is what matters most. When we can pull mind and body and breath together, now we're operating as an integrated soulful presence rather than just a mind or a mind and a body only, that mind, body, and spirit, which is breath in the body, is spirit in the body. So, so when we can get all three of these working together, everything starts to come together in a felt sensation sort of way. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I would encourage everyone is just, just sit where you're sitting right now and just imagine that someone is walking in the door in the room that you're in um, that pushes your buttons or trips a trigger or whatever. Uh, ultimately, they are there so that you get your buttons pushed so that you can learn to heal the buttons, heal the triggers, um, but you know, one step at a time. So, so just, just imagine that they're walking into the room right now. And notice when your attention goes there, your energy goes there and your splatted or dispersed energy rushes to them instead of staying home for you. So imagine that they walk in the door and just notice what your energy does. You just, you might even be able to notice what you feel in your body as that's occurring. Now, just, just politely claim it back. And you don't have to do anything that's obvious, the outer world, just, just claim it back. Just pull your energy back onto self. Instead of the energy going on to object, it stays on subject, it stays on you instead of other. So just claim it back here. You can still look at them, but, your energy, you're calling your energy back onto the self as you do it. And this will give you a different sensation in your body. And it's important to recognize that that sensation is closer to the truth of who you are than the one that was just about to, you know, abandon again and, and dis disembody. So here we are now back on self. We can still look at the person. And I'm going to take you back to this person in a moment. And we're going to do some real work with with um, building circuits right through the buttons, building circuits, cutting a pathway right through that. But first I wanna teach you just a little skill, okay? So here we are back on subject. Person can sit there for a moment until we get ready for them. And we're back here. And uh, I'd like to enhance your ability to move this energy in your own system with your own consciousness and your breath. So imagine that you have a tube uh, a central channel, it's called the Shashumna in Eastern practices. You might be familiar with that if you're a yogi or a meditator or what have yes. you, but it's a tube that runs right down through the center of the brain, through the center, the center of the brain here, uh, through the center of the throat, through the center of the heart, through the center of the solar plexus, through the center of the belly, right through the tip of the spine and goes straight down into the earth. And it rises back up again. It's a two-way street. So we're going to breathe down through that tube just to start to animate it and start to move the energy or the pranic healing capacity in the body just voluntarily on our own. So as if you have an, a whale's blowhole in the top of your head, just imagine that you're breathing in from overhead and you're breathing and draw the breath through the center of the brain all the way down through that path, all the way to your belly, to the belly, not in the chest, but in the belly. Inhale, the belly gets big. And then we're going to exhale and press that breath right down into the earth. Just with your imagination, your intentionality, it generates photon density. Little packets of energy start to respond to your attention, to your command by your attention. So now we're going to breathe from the earth up into the belly, just right up through this tube, right up into the belly. And now we're going to exhale right up through that channel, right up and out through the top of the head. Now I'm going to give you a couple of things to do to anchor yourself in the body so that that process becomes easier for you. Pull your shoulder blades together, drop them down. Okay. Um, in the base of the pelvic bowl, there is a series of muscles that if you were going to the bathroom and you had to stop the stream instantly, you would squeeze these muscles. It's called mula banda and it means root lock. And it means that you're going to stay in your body instead of wafting up into your head again. So squeeze those muscles as if you were going to the bathroom and you had to stop the stream instantly. You just squeeze these muscles in the base of the pelvic bowl around the perineum. And we're squeezing the shoulder blades together and dropping them down. Now let's do the same thing. Again, roll your eyes up this time. And as you breathe in through the top of your head, just imagine this breath coming right behind the eyes where you can feel that muscle contraction down through your throat, down to the shoulder blades, right in front of where they're squeezing all the way, breathe it down right into the belly, big belly, 
the belly gets big. Now squeeze those muscles in the base of the pelvic bowl and shoot that breath right down into the earth, even though you're squeezing them. Now keep them squeezed for this moment and inhale up from the earth right into your belly again. So there's a little resistance there. You're squeezing these muscles and the belly's filling and right there you can feel yourself anchoring in the body. Now roll your eyes up again. You're gonna exhale from the belly, up right through the heart space, up right through the throat, through the center of the brain and shoot that right out the top of your head. And this is called central channel breathing. We're gonna just do it once more. We're just repeating, nothing new here. Okay, roll the eyes up, inhale from right above your head, um, maybe two feet above your head, maybe four inches above your head, whatever is most comfortable. Inhale through the center of the brain, through the throat, through the chest, all the way down, draw it, draw it down into your belly. Squeeze your shoulder blades to kind of align, and it's like you're breathing down an elevator shaft and you're inside that elevator shaft. Now squeeze those pelvic bowl muscles again, and exhale from the belly, straight through the base of the pelvis, through the tip of the spine, right into the earth. And now inhale up from the earth, right into the belly, and then squeeze your shoulder blades and roll your eyes up again, and exhale right up through the channel and out the top of the head. So now just relax your eyes and right back here in the center. And you might start to notice that there's, there's, there's a greater source of energy in the core of the body, simply because we've been tending to it, putting our attention on it and breathing through this core channel. Keep in mind, you've been living maybe for decades, those of you that are watching us, uh, maybe for decades without ever really doing that. So it might take a couple of days for you to get the hang of how that feels and how to coordinate that. But it absolutely within, within a day or two will start to vitalize the body in a way that the body is not used to being vitalized. So now let's just do it without all the efforts just a little bit of squeeze in the blades, a little bit of squeeze in the, in the pelvic bowl, and just take a breath from overhead, right down through the center of your brain, throat, heart, chest, to the belly. Squeeze it a little bit in the pelvic bowl, exhale right into the earth. Inhale up from the earth, right into the belly. Always deep in this channel, in this elevator shaft, and then exhale right up through that elevator shaft and out the top of your head. So that's step two of what I wanted to share with you. If you practice that, you can't overdo it, practice it multiple times a day. You're always gonna be taking a breath. Just make it a conscious breath. Make it a breath that's breathing you through your body in a way like, like we're describing here. We're, we're redirecting the, the mind's attention into the core of the body where mind, body, and breath have an opportunity to alchemize more easily because of the nature of the energy frequencies at the core of the system in this way. And now there's one more step that's the most valuable of all, okay? So we're back to the person who's standing in your doorway, all right? Now we've learned about how to stay embodied instead of disembodying and splatting and dispersing and being drawn out into the outer dramas of life so easily. All of the work that we do with letting go becomes more easy uh, when we are anchored in our bodies in this way because we have a stable sense of self, even though we're letting go of old ideas of who we are we can still have a sense of stability when the body is involved in this way. So here we are in this central channel breath uh, capacity. We're practicing this, we're getting better and better at it. And now we return our attention to this person in our doorway. And we see that if I squeeze my shoulder blades and squeeze at the base of the pelvic bowl and central channel breathe when I'm looking at this person, it's even easier for me to maintain my energy here than to allow it to disperse onto the drama of my movie out here, this person that I've asked to come into my life and push my buttons so that I can find my buttons. And now I'm gonna share with you a way to discover where the buttons are, why the buttons are there, why you have a reaction to this person. If all of your circuits were in place and there was no wobble, and there were no leaks in the field as we've been describing, you wouldn't have a reaction to this person, no matter who they were or what they were doing, okay? So, so when they're in the doorway and, or any you know, facsimile of that, and you witness your energy or the charge that you feel, there's going to be a charge in your body that is specifically related to this person. You might feel a tightness in your throat or tightness in your chest or a knot in your stomach, or lump in your throat, or something will happen in your physical body the moment that this is occurring. And rather than ask, why do you do what you do that upsets me so much? Ask a better question. That better question would be, where in my body do I feel a charge because of what you're doing? Because 
What's happening in my body when I feel a charge is that energy is trying to rise and it's hitting an area where there's no pathway carved. I've been going around that area all my life. And when the energy rises and hits that in relation to you, I can feel it. I can feel it in my belly. I can feel it in my gut. I can feel it in my chest or I can feel it in my throat. And so when I ask where in my body do I feel the response to you, I am now going to squeeze that instead of just observe it. I'm going to become aware of it, but I'm also going to let the body know that the mind is aware of this mind, body, spirit triad in such a way that we're going to work together and build some new circuits because of this situation. So I'm not only witnessing that there's a response and I'm allowing that to soften, I'm going to show it how to soften more easily. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hug it. So let's say this individual comes in the doorway and they create a charge in my throat. I'm going to squeeze my shoulder blades together, just like we did, squeeze the muscles in the base of the pelvic bowl, just gently, just enough to align myself back in this central core of who I am. And now I'm going to hug this area that's having a reaction. I'm going to hug it on the inside. Just going to squeeze it a little bit as if I'm hugging it so that I can keep my mind focused on this area where I've been diverting and deflecting, going around something. And now I'm going to squeeze it and hug it and breathe right up through it. I'm going to welcome this into the flow, welcome it into the fold. Instead of diverting, I'm going to include it in my central channel flow until it starts to soften. And so let's just do this. It'll just take us a few seconds, okay? Picture sure. your favorite button pusher person in the doorway, okay? <laughs> you got one. Everybody's got one. If you don't have one, I'll loan you one of mine, <laughs> okay? Uh, I'm just, just playing here. But just, you know, something. could doesn't have to be a person. It could be a situation. Something that, oh, you have a reaction. So, so remember our channel. We're breathing up and down the channel. Just the best you can in this moment. And I've only just showed you. So, you know, just, just go with it, Okay. And there they are. Now you're gonna claim your energy back, first things first. I gotta be gathered and centered here. So I'm just politely pulling it back onto self. And I'm gonna breathe through the central channel and I'm still looking at them. So just look at your person and feel this and take a few breaths. Always inhale to the belly and exhale out one end of the channel or the other. And then specifically get involved in what is it that happens here? What is What reaction do I have? What is it that gets me every time? And what are the sensory inputs that are associated with that? Maybe any memories or how it affects my life. Just all of it. Just bring it forward. And then notice in your body, maybe your attention's already there. It's in your throat or in your chest or in your solar plexus or in your gut. And just give that area a hug. Just hug it. And bring your attention into this central channel hugging this area and anchoring yourself with these anchor points of the shoulder blades together, the mula bandha at the base of the spine. And let's take a breath. Either allow your attention to go over the overhead or start in the earth, whichever one is most effective for you in this moment, it just feels more natural. Go there and inhale into the belly from there. Squeeze the muscles in the pelvic bowl, squeeze the blades, and then exhale the other, the, uh, out the other end of the channel, whether it's up the channel or down the channel. In fact, let's all do it together right now. Let's just breathe from the earth up through Mula Bandha into the belly. Wherever else in the body you are activated by this situation, squeeze that, hug that, and pull your shoulder blades together and down and exhale up through the belly, through the chest. Maybe it's moving through this area, up through the center of the brain and out the top of the head. And then inhale from overhead, right down through the center of the brain, through the throat, through the chest, maybe through this area, wherever it is already included in your flow, draw it all the way down to the belly. And then exhale into the earth. Inhale up from the earth into the belly, squeeze Mula Bandha, shoulder blades together and down. And exhale right up through solar plexus, through the heart center, through the throat, up through the center of the brain and out the top of the head. And one last time, in from overhead, drawing down all the high frequency energies that we're constantly taking in, if we allow it to, breathing it all the way down through these areas, shoulder blades together, Mula Bandha, squeeze the muscles of the pelvic bowl and exhale right into the earth. And then just relax in your body and just continue to take a central channel breath, however that feels appropriate for you. Always remembering that this 
this channel is the ray of light that we truly are. It's, it's our foundation. It's the silver thread that many meditators have, have discovered and, and, and witnessed or perceived. And as we continue to breathe with this, we're generating the mind's attention here in these tiny little packets of energy that happen to comprise everything, um, start to gather and concentrate in the core of your system. And so it gives your subconscious a greater sense of self and your sensory nervous system can pick up on you being there. So it's not always going out there to figure out who I am and how do I fit in and am I okay? And now notice how you feel in the body. Just notice how you feel and take a look at your person in the doorway. And notice that what's happening here is a flow that can flow uh, no matter what's going on over there. So you can perceive that you're actually here as a solution instead of being pulled into what is contributing to this dualistic idea of what are the problems of, of our lives. So when we can make that distinction, and then we're able to be available for what's going on rather than being reactive and then protective and then defensive and then trying to you know, live in the face of such conflict. We are utilizing this friction to show us who and what we really are and how we can master living inside of this system as, as this true cosmic awareness itself, uh, rather than a personality who's, you know, duking it out with somebody in the doorway. <laughs> <Right. laughs> well, thank you for that. That was fun. That was really fun. Yay. Yeah. It's so, a way to center. Good. Then when we yeah. go into, uh, you know, our practices of, um, like such as your beautiful practices, Hale, with uh, with the Sedona method of, you know, releasing and letting go. To let go from deep inside the core is different than letting go from in the outer perimeter of, of yes. who we've, you know, figured, mis misinterpreted of who we are. Right. And so uh, the two are beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, collaborative efforts. Yeah, I agree. I, I think uh, people who are already letting go or exploring the truth of who they are, adding this as a as a another core um, teaching to explore would be very helpful for them. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, I had a question about the shoulder uh, shoulder back. Is isn't it more? Uh, again, I'm I'm know enough about yoga to to be dangerous, but <laughs> actually I've done quite a bit of yoga. Isn't it more actually pulling back through here as opposed to through or, your through your um if you it's almost like pulling your your neck back a little bit yes another that's another banda that is something that i teach when i have time to be in in a little bit more detail there oh, are about okay. three other locks and yes, bandas yes, okay. that we use so this yes. is the jalandara banda you're yes. you're absolutely uh correct and the more we draw the jaw back for those of you that aren't aware of what hale's referring to uh if we if we just Kind of retract the jaw back a little bit, it opens up the breath and it stretches the primitive brain just enough to send some messages uh, between the brain and our heart and the brain and our head. And they have better communication yes, yes. with the brain and our gut that way. Yes, so yes. shoulder blades together and down the jaw back, it opens up this channel, even just leaning back again. Like if you're not leaning back against your chair, but if you're sitting upright and you lean back, just imagine this, I'm leaning back inside of myself against my own spine just leaning back a little bit and it opens up this whole channel. Whereas if we lean forward, it can cut it off at the neck and it can kind of round it off so much in the, in this, this mid thoracic spine that yes. it, it drops the momentum and the, 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 the potency with which this breath can traverse up and down the central channel. And it is important that we allow that alignment so that the, the breath has the momentum to pierce through the veils that exist between these layers of consciousness that keep us sometimes being loving, sometimes being powerful, sometimes being able to speak our truth, sometimes being you know, highly in, intuitive and understanding the, the truth of our multidimensionality. And, but we want to be able to have access to all of those things all of the time in, a, in an alchemical sort of way. So these alignments and the breathing help to bridge and merge and blend and integrate these various aspects of our wholeness together. So, uh, so yes, you're absolutely correct on the, uh, the, the jaw being involved in it as well. I'm just trying to get some. Yeah, no, no, you're, I, I, I think you're right. Probably that was a little extra, not really necessary to get started. But just the sense of sitting back is actually a great thing to be doing all the time because most of us are 
either falling forward into life without realizing it or contracting on ourselves, which causes yeah. us to shut down. But if you just yeah. sit back within yourself, just doing that, even before you add the breath, that opens, starts to open things up. So that's a yeah. very good pointer. Yeah, just sitting back like that does some yes. of that claiming the energy back automatically yes, yes. It, because it opens the channel and it's like yes. it vacuum, it vacuum uh, sucks all of it in, together again. Uh, yes. and, and the worst is the combination when we contract over and we lean forward, we're just shut off. <laughs> right. we're, we're shut off. And that's where yeah. a lot of people are. No, I don't know. If you look around, I, 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 when I'm out in public, I sometimes notice how, how contracted most people are. And yeah. it's, you can always tell when someone's not contracted because it, uh, besides the light that's coming through their eyes is and out through or around them and through them, you, it very often shows it in a physical uh, settled in alignment uh, of their bodies. So, yeah. Yeah, the, the physicality is demonstrating what we're doing with our consciousness, how we're doing. It's giving us feedback. So yes. if we can roll the shoulders back and open up and anchor in the back of the spine and it automatically opens the heart and it gets us used to being so revealed and it might feel vulnerable to people when they start opening this way it might feel like oh, i don't want to i don't want this or i don't want that yeah i don't want to appear to be all full of myself or i don't want to you know be too rigid it's like then don't just open <laughs> and be free and breathe right. and it will eventually become familiar and it will feel so good that you'll know in an instant when you're disconnecting and you know crumpling yes. back into that yes, to that yes. old pattern that is so familiar yeah it's interesting that the, the, it's counterintuitive first because most of us have believe that we have to shut down to be safe and contract to be safe but the exact opposite is true. The more transparent you become, the more open you are. There's, there's less, there's less, you're less creating those sticking places and there's less of a, an, a separate person for anything to stick to. So, right. yeah, so it, yeah. You know, that when you mentioned that, it reminded me of, uh, I grew up in the Midwest and there are a lot of tornadoes. And yes. so the yeah. tornado drill is you open your doors and your windows when a tornado is coming because if you close everything down and batten down the hatches, it explodes. It's, now it now <laughs> it has a very a very big pressure gradient that you don't want to be a part of. Yes, yes, the yes. same is true in our human system. That that we're, what quantum science is showing us is that we are actually the space between the particles. And so when we animate there, it creates this openness that allows yes. the fluidity that you're talking about, not locking down as a separate self that needs to be defended or protected. It's available. I'm just free. I'm here. Breathe right through me. And I'm still here. So, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, that just reminded me of my... Uh, my uh, Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. Moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but people have had that direct experience. When, if you think about your experience, you'll you'll see that the times where you shut down in the middle of an experience, it it didn't protect you. It did the exact opposite. You were only walking in the suffering and creating these little explosions that were happening within your consciousness. So that's that's I like right. that. Good and analogy. you know, the sad part is that, that when we try, we contract when we're trying yes, and yes. then we try and we try and we try, and then we kind of surrender and then it happens, yes. but it happens because of the surrender. But our subconscious has always thought, no, it happened because I did all that trying. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah It happened yeah. because I did all the trying, but it didn't happen. It, the only, the only thing that trying did was exhaust us. Yes. And that exhaustion <laughs> caused this, this, all right, I'll let go. Right. <laughs> right? And then, <laughs> Then it can roll right through. That's so right. So we just have to like, right. hmm, let's be sure that we know what actually generated the outcome we were looking for. And it's yeah, always absolutely. the surrender. <laughs> absolutely. 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 So anyway, this has been wonderful. I, I really am enjoying our conversation. I could go on for hours, but got to got to kind of reel it in a little bit here. So one of the yeah. things uh, I want to do two things. First off, I know that you had something you wanted to offer our listeners. What was that? Uh, yes, well, we have uh, we have a couple of things. One is a a free transmission that we do um, monthly, a, a healing transmission, which allows these distortions in the field to be acclimated, uh, to be 
to be realigned. We, we kind of do this as a collective around the world. We have tens of thousands of people uh, engaging in this transmission every month. And so the power of coming into that union is, is immense. It is, it is a wonderful thing to experience. And so I'm just teaching people a little bit about how to feel the energy and feel that space in between and then connecting it and you know, blending. And it's such a beautiful time on our planet to be building these communities around the world that can support one another in yes. all sorts of ways. So that is, that's an easy find. It's, it's on my website, drsuemorder.com. And then uh, uh, I think it's, uh, I have a note here, healing transmission. So it's, uh, it's uh, forward slash healing transmission, drsuemorder.com healing transmission. And it is a, uh, a wonderful way for us to connect and unite. And then also there is a gift that I'm just uh, bringing because I felt it would be um, relevant to the conversation that we're having here today is how to activate this healer within, how to activate this. And so it's a meditation that, that kind of brings you down through this central channel and, and one step at a time, stopping off and working with the specific energies of the system that will help to integrate and align. Because interestingly enough, you don't have a healer within, you are the healer within. And it is the you that is the healer that I really want to animate and activate. It's the same version of you that is the energy that we've been speaking about today. And when we can truly have an understanding of what our role in that is, uh, it changes everything in our lives and allows us to heal all sorts of things that we never knew that we had, truly had the power to heal on every level of our lives, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and usually a combination. Of yeah, it's usually things. a combination. That's right. Yeah. So thank you. And I'll, I will, it will, this will also, for everyone uh, listening to this, it will also be in the show notes and we'll put it on uh, YouTube as well when we post the video. In addition to that, I just realized there is also another gift. It's called Fear into Fire. And it's uh, about the equivalent of six, four CDs that are uh, just conversation about how to turn your fears into a passionate fire in your system that we were speaking about how, how uh, in our, the beginning of our conversation today about how, how passionate we become when we get engaged in this conversation. Yes, yes. And so it's more for you with practices inside of that along the lines of what we were doing here today. I almost oh, forgot that's, to mention well, that's that. that's very so. generous. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll definitely put that in the show notes. Uh, but if you, uh, and we'll talk about, I'll re-emphasize this again when we go through it. Beautiful. That's great. So is there any parting thought you'd like to leave everyone with, Sue? Oh my, so many, right? Yeah, we'll uh, pick one. <laughs> say, you know what? The, the one thing that I think humanity is, is here to realize is that, that we are operating here as energy. We are the energy of the cosmos. And there is nothing broken. And there is nothing missing. And there is nothing wrong in you or in your life that is happening around you, although it can appear as such. That all that's happening is that we're here to build the circuits inside of our system, which is what we were doing in our simple practice today. We're here to build the circuits to be able to perceive the perfection of everything that is happening and how it is all supporting us to awaken to a greater version of who we are. And so when we can make that flip and start to see from that perspective, everything changes. So all we have to do is learn how to, one breath at a time, turn everything that is happening here into something that is in our favor instead of something that we're here to try to survive. So we are empowered beyond uh, what our mind has previously known, but we're going to do something about that. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Sue Mortar. You can learn more about Dr. Sue at drsuemorter.com. That's D-R-S-U-E-M-O-R-T-E-R.com. Access your free gift at drsuemorter.com forward slash fear into fire. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe so you have immediate access to future episodes. Please give us a five-star rating and share it with the people you care about. If you'd like to learn more about my work, my mentor, Wester Levinson's work, and the Sedona Method, please visit Sedona.com. As you explore our site, you learn the key to lasting happiness, success, peace, and emotional well-being. We have books, courses, events, and plenty of free material to explore. Again, go to Sedona.com. That's S-E-D-O-N-A.com. 
Thank you for being here, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Wedding Go and the Greatest Secrets.